Okay, so hello everyone, and uh, thank you. Yes, I need this applause even more today because I'm not too used to this thing. Okay, so before I start off with my session, I would like to make a confession that I am not at all a great orator. I know it might come as a surprise to a few who have seen me perform on stage, but trust me, contrary to the person I am on stage, Contrary to the person that live music makes me on stage, I am the complete opposite in my real life. Uh, I'll keep it very simple today. I'll share a lesson that I learned from my life. Life taught me the importance of a word that is so negative in itself, but you have no idea how much positivity it could bring in your life in the long run. I'm talking about the word no. N-O, no. Yes, life has taught me to say no at the right time, even when you're chasing your dreams. Whenever we think of chasing our dreams, whenever we think of achieving something, it's quite obvious, most of the cases we focus on the things which we should do, the things which we have to do. Like we all know, if we want to achieve something, you will have to be hardworking. You will have to be dedicated. You should be honest. We all know that, right? But what about the factors the other way around? What about the factors that what we don't want from life? What we do not want to do, the areas where we do not want to compromise and the places where we do not want to see ourselves. What about that? See, what I believe, it's very important to have a very confident look at the areas of your strength. Very good. But I think it's even more important to know your areas of weakness. And that is the only way to know yourself in the truest self. You have to have a very clear concept of your true self. And trust me, if you know your areas of weakness, it will help you and it will save you from so many wrong decisions in your life. Trust me. So there was a phase in my life when my family was going through... Um, some family financial crisis and those few years were very difficult for all of us. I was doing my graduation and side by side I was doing some recording sessions, uh, some jingles, some voiceovers and backing vocals and there was a point when I started having offers of live shows. The shows, the kind of shows that is popularly known here as matcha. No, I am not against that kind of event, not at all. And I do respect all the artists who choose to do such shows. I am full in respect with all of them. But that is not what I exactly wanted for my life. That is not what I exactly have seen in my dream. Now, shaping a dream is another important aspect. And when I was small, I'll get back to this story later, but... When I was small, like two and a half or three years of age, pretty small, every evening I used to fall asleep. At the moment it was six or seven in the evening. And one fine day, my grandmother was watching television and I was sleeping beside her. And suddenly an advertisement came up with a very groovy music to it. And she finally noticed that I got up, I sat, I moved my body with that groove, and I again fell asleep once that was over. And that is the exact point when she actually realized that maybe I might have something special in me. And that belief that she had about me was installed in me as well. I started believing that yes, that is my dream. And it was kind of a tradition that whenever there was a guest at our place, my grandmother used to ask me to sing for them. You know, I'm a shower by the I like to dance so that was the scenario. It was like a ritual. And I used to be the happiest child on earth for those few moments. 
And a very few occasions where my grandmother might have forgotten to ask me to sing for them. I used to be so upset on her and I used to run to my mom and I used to complain that why didn't she ask me to sing today? I was so well prepared for this song and I used to be so upset. So yes, that is how I actually started living my dreams in the tiniest and the childishest ways possible. So coming back to that story of when we were having a very rough time financially. So yes, I got offers. The matcha shows I was talking about. Again, with all respect to the people who choose to be the cover artists, who choose to do that kind of shows. But that was something which I never wanted to do in my life. Because I was so sure that I will not do a show, uh, a kind of show where I cannot sing a single song that I can call my own. So I waited for that moment where I will at least have one song that I can call my own song. So yes, deep inside, I, I had a very, very strong belief that there will be one day when I'll have my own platform where I can showcase my work the way I want. And guess what? My positivity, my belief, and of course all my prayers were answered when I finally got a call to co-host a musical talk show on a Bengali private channel. And it was called Take a Break. It was quite popular that time. Have you heard about the show, the name? Right. So yes, I had to go through auditions and I was finally selected. So, and that is the platform which actually opened so many avenues for me. That is the place from where I got to know about so many good musicians of our industry. People who were willing to work with the newcomers. I was one at that time. And Neil Dotto was one of them. He heard me sing in that show and... One fine day, he called me and offered me a song for Cross Connection. And yes, that is my first ever playback release. And two years later, the biggest project of my career arrived, and that is Ranjan Amya Rajpun. And of course, again, thanks to Neil and Anjan Dattu. So once that was released, I could see the whole world around me changing. I suddenly felt that I was at the center and I realized that people started expecting good work from me and the younger ones were started looking up to me and to be honest I was thoroughly enjoying every bit of it but as we all say that life is not a straight line with all the good things came my way controversy and social media lynching Yes, you guessed it right. It was after the movie Bedroom released, the controversial song Maya Bono released, that I could literally see in front of my eyes my audience getting divided into two groups. One who liked my work, one who liked that particular song in totality, and the other group, of course, who did not like it at all, and they had their share of opinions as well, which is very normal. On one side, I was showered with love and blessings, but on the other hand, so much negativity was coming my way, and at times it was getting too personal and very harsh. And there was a period at that time, though it was a very brief one, but there was a brief period when I was heartbroken. I was shattered. I didn't know what to do. I did not know. I... I just lost it because I was not at all prepared and I did not expect that this kind of negativity will come in my career at such an early stage. But again, life taught me to filter. I said yes to those comments and feedbacks which I knew would help me. I said yes to those criticisms that I knew that would help me grow as a musician and person. And a big no to those that were unwanted, unnecessary, harsh, irrelevant, and stress-giving comments. By this time, uh, came my way a lot of live shows, uh, media interviews, 
playback of this and I started learning to say no all the more firmly. I started to have the courage to say no to the projects which I felt was not for me. I had the courage to say no to the works that I felt and I did not feel that I could do justice to. Yes, I'd say no to all of that. Of course, while saying this, I lost a few many offers. I would not say lost, but yes, I left behind many offers. And there were few offers which might have been very lucrative to many. Offers like uh, to sing or to do backing vocals for a very big budget A-lister Bollywood movie. Offers like Bollywood remix songs from a very, very reputed national music label. I said no to all because, again, I was so sure that that is not the way I would like to enter the national market. That is not what I would like to start off my Bollywood career with. I was so sure and I said no. So there are many instances like this where I have successfully said a no. And people might call me very rough and very uh, attitude with full of attitude and snob, but I don't care because the dream was so clear, picture perfect in front of my eyes. So people who know me, they know that I am not at all a PR person. I do not uh, attend PR events that much. I do not socialize that much. I do not upload good morning selfies on my social media page or profile. In spite of not doing so many things, but still I'm happy. And I'm very sorted at that. Of course, my life is not perfect at all, like any one of yours. My life has always been full of ups and downs, and it still is. But you know what? I love it with all of this. I love my life just the way it is, because I have accepted myself wholeheartedly. I have a small world, and I'm very happy with that little world I have, with my family, with my ever-supportive husband, with my team, whom I call my second family, few of my friends, and of course my fans who love me so unconditionally. So yes, life taught me to look into the bigger picture instead of focusing on the instant gratifications. And it is this ability of saying no at the right point that I could see all the positives more clearly that life has in store for me, life has to offer me. Instead of jumping at every opportunity that comes my way, I tried to look into the possibilities with the long run effect. And it is this ability to have the bigger picture clear in front of you. It is this ability to say no to the things you don't want to do at the right point of time is possible only when you have a clear self-concept, when you know your areas of strength and more importantly, your areas of weakness. And it is only then that you can achieve all this when you have a clear, definite answer to the question, who am I? So if you have a confusion still that you don't know yourself, the real self, if you still feel that you know you don't have a definite answer to the who you are question, don't worry at all. It's never too late. It's just a matter of time, trust me. And it's just a matter of some introspection. So what you all have to do is just give yourself some alone time to think about yourself, to look into yourself. And please, while you do that, keep aside your mobile phones, please. No mobile phones that time, right? So that's it. And yes, life taught me to say no at the right point, even when you're chasing your dreams. So that is my story. And thank you so much. It has been such an honor and privilege to share my bit of the untold stories. Thank you, Aya EST and TEDx. And thank you all for listening to me so patiently throughout. Have a great evening ahead and stay blessed. Thank you.
Oh yeah, I cannot say no because the illusion is already. I mean, <laughs> otherwise I mean normally बोला था कि क्या नो वो अभिनेत्री आज लेकिन योगना को देखा था बोलो. But I cannot say that today because I saw him perform so well. Okay, so. आज की शून्य चाओ. अच्छा ठीक है जरा रिक्वेस्ट कुछ तारा जाने तो गांडा निश्चय तो गाय बे ना ना ओके माया बोनु बिहारी ने माया बोनु बिहारी ने होरी ने गहनो शापनो शंचरी ने कैनो तारे धोरी बारे कोरी पान आकारन Maya bono bihari ni Thak thak ni jo bone dhuri pe Aami shudh ba shori ro shuri te Thak thak ni jo bone dhuri pe Aami shudh ba shori ro shuri te सब्रवार्सियल गान दिए सो एनी थैंक यू